Okay, so let's look at the next question. So next question, we are going to move on to that. So first of all, I'm just gonna delete this and take off all of this. Okay, so now we are ready to the next uh, question and we're trying to solve that question. So I'm going to move on to the next one where we have the question from Netflix. So assume you are given the below tables for the session activity of users. Write a query to assign ranks to users by the total session duration for different session types they have had between a start date of this and end date of this. Okay, so first of all, what I'm actually gonna do the exact same logic where I'm trying to split this question into a couple of parts so I can actually solve them one by one because that's the usual way I try to approach SQL problems where I look at the question and I try to like split them into parts and try to solve them one by one. It makes it much more easier to approach the question and solve it. Basically, if I look at the question, it basically says write a query to assign ranks to users by total session duration. So we know exactly that we need a total session duration because we'll be using that in our rank function. So that's one part of the code. And then for the different session types, which we can use within the rank function itself. So whenever you go for an interview, it's always good to have these basic functions clear in your head and how to use them because most of the time, uh, like when you're in the interview, they're not really looking for an exact optimal solution how to solve this problem. But they want, what they want to see is that you have a good knowledge of SQL and they'll give you a whiteboard where they'll see, okay, how would you approach this problem and how would you actually solve this? And if you're using some type of function, what is the syntax of that function? So it's always good to have that understanding clear, have some sort of basic definitions clear, and that definitely will play in your core. If you're trying to apply for a role that heavily involves SQL in it. Okay, so let's look at the table itself because I can see the other half of the question. They have that you have to select the start date and the end date between those periods. So all the sessions has to be in the middle of those two, which is again the one, one month period. So the next half of the question is where you have to kind of like calculate the durations. So as you can see, first of all, within the columns as well, we have session ID, we have user ID, we have session type, we have duration, and we have start time. So obviously we will be using start time because we want to make sure that the start date is between those two dates, which is again for a one month period. And also looking at the actual question, it says total session duration. So I'm assuming like the user could have multiple sessions as well. So if they're watching something, then they might be actually logging in again and again. So we do want to calculate the total amount of sum. So if I try to look at the output of this code, so the output of the code will look like that you have your user ID because you're looking at the actual number of users. And what we are trying to do is we're trying to look at their total session duration. So we will obviously be using some sort of aggregate function on duration to count that value. And then that would be against session type. So we exactly know the rank would work with the actual amount of duration of your session with the session type. But at the moment, if you look at the actual code, we only have duration. We don't really have a total duration. So if a user is actually logged in twice and have a couple of sessions, we do want to have it as a total duration that we can use in a rank function. So let's start looking at the code itself, how we will code this out. So I'm back in my editor. So the table name is sessions. So I'm actually going to do something like select star from sessions okay so as you can see within the table we have session id we have user id we do have session type which is again if there's a streaming not interactive responsive um, interactive and then we have duration within hours and we do have this duration in hours for the exact session type and then we have this start time so what i need first of all is i want to kind of like put an aggregate function to collect all my duration in one row for a specific user and a session type so for this case, we'll be using something like a aggregate function, which will be sum. And whenever we use aggregate function, we do have to have a group class because we are using other columns in the table itself, which are such as user ID and streaming type. So let's try to look at this code itself. So what I'm actually going to do is, so first of all, I'm actually going to just give an alias here. And then what I'm actually going to say is s dot, and I'm looking at the duration. So duration here. And what I want to do is I want to actually sum this. While I'm summing this, I do also want to see is the actual user ID. So s dot user ID, and then the second of all would be s dot session type. So once I do that, I have my user ID and session type, and I'm summing this value. So just to format this first, so easily you can see what I'm trying to do here. Now, because I've used this aggregate function, which is uh, sum, I do have to use group class, so I'm going to say group by 
and I'm actually going to use which is your s.user ID and then the session type so I can easily just copy paste these values so once I do that that will be the way I'm actually grouping them by so just to see the output of that so as you can see we have our user IDs now and we have session type and we have some of the total duration I'm actually going to name this as total duration so that's my column name and what I also want to do is if I actually go back to my question itself it does say that the session type and they have to be between the start date of this and end date of 2020-021 so which is for one month so it's always good to do that first so what I'm actually going to do is I'm at, before my group by statement I'm actually going to put a where clause here and I'm actually going to say where s dot and then I'm looking at the start time and because I'm selecting the month here, I can use between. So I'm actually going to say between, and I'm actually going to look at the format of the date. So this is the format of the date. You can actually just select that copy, which is 1st of Jan 2020, and that should be going till, and so if I look at the value, which is till February, so I'm actually going to select that, which is, Perfect. So as you can see, the start time has to be between 1st of January to 1st of February, which is the actual condition within our question. So once I run this, that should only show me the values for within that period and for user ID session type and duration. So now the next part, because again, as you can see, we have split the question into two parts. One part where we kind of like got this output of the form where we have user ID, session type and duration. So now because we have the second part, which is again to apply the rank function. If I go back to the question itself, which it says, so what we have to do is to assign a rank to the users for total session duration for different session types. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to try to apply the rank function on this. So to apply a rank function, what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to put this code into a subquery. So to put that into subquery, I just have to mark them into brackets and I can just give an alias of SS. So what I'm going to say is select star from and if I actually run this code, as you can see, I haven't changed anything. I've just added my query into a subquery because I'm not going to apply a rank function on this now. So for this, I'm actually going to say ss.star and then I'm actually going to put this into a second line and apply rank here. So rank is the function which you can call it like that, rank over. And in this case, I'm going to partition my data So once I do partition by, now if I look at the question back again, so the question is to write a query to assign rank to users. So it will be rank over users and it will be on the basis of total duration and for session type. So what I'm going to do here is because the rank is by user, so it will be ID, and it's done on the basis of duration. So I'm going to say order by ss.duration. rank order so as you can see i don't really have to mention the session type because session type will be like the actual attribute which will be counted against that so rank will be against it that should be actually not duration that should be total duration perfect so as you can see once i run this i can see my user because that, that's the user and it's a session type. So session is uh, streaming and not interactive. But if I look at the total duration, so obviously my total duration, but if you see at the moment, the logical way, the total duration is actually ranked two because one of the reasons of that is because when we were doing order by, the, if you don't really mention explicitly like what exact order you want to kind of rank it by, so it, all this does is an ascending order. So because I want to do this case into a descending order, so I would say DESC here, which will do it now in descending order. And once I look at the exact same user again, so if you see the actual output of that, so streaming is rank one based on the session type of the user and total duration. So as you can see, this user was locked in twice and the rank order for the first session, which was the longest session based on the total duration was 14 hours and that was for streaming.
So I hope it kind of explains you how to solve these kind of questions. And usually, like as you can see, whenever you split the questions into subcourts, it always makes it easier to kind of approach the problem. Even when you're explaining to the interviewer, he would be easily be able to, because again, sometimes you are going too fast to try to explain yourself and maybe they're not really following you or they might not understand what you're trying to say. But when you split the question into subparts, you can easily show them part by part, which again makes it really easier for them to understand what you're trying to do and how you're trying to achieve the results out of the solution. If you're still watching this video, do subscribe to my channel if you enjoy this kind of content. At the moment, I'm working on a lot of different interesting projects that I will be bringing out to you in the following weeks that might interest you as well and might give you a good understanding of this data science field. So I hope you enjoy my videos. Do leave it in the comment box below if you have any suggestions for me and like the video if you're enjoying this content and also subscribe to my channel or share with somebody who you think would be interested in these videos. I really appreciate for you doing that. Okay, so let's look at the next question. So the next question is from Google. Assume you are given the middle table of measurement values from a sensor for several days. Each measurement can happen several times in a given day. Write a query to output the sum of values for every odd measurement and the sum of values of every even measurement by date. So as you can see, first of all, what I'm going to try to do is I'm trying to split this query into two parts again, which again, we have done for all the rest of the questions. So the first way I want to do is I want to split them again, as you can see here, the first thing is to find the odd and even values in the measurement value, because if I know my odd and even value, I can easily create a separate column for both of them. And then obviously the, the last part of the code would be to actually sum them on the basis of the date. So that's how I would approach this problem and split that into again two sub queries, which is again, I'm going to try to solve first one and then the second one. So let's start looking at the table itself first. So I'm going to say something like select star from measurements. Okay, so as you can see within the table, we have measurement ID. We have this measurement value, which is again, sometimes it's odd or sometimes it's even. And then we have the measurement time. So first of all, I need to find, uh, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to find all the odd and even values and create them into a next, uh, their own column itself. So to do it easily, what I can do is, first of all, let's format this. I'm going to say uh, an alias for measurement as M, and then I'm actually just going to say M dot star, and then I'm actually going to apply it here. I can actually use something like case statement here because I do want to have its own columns with odd and even values. So I can say something like case when m dot measurement value. So I'm going to actually apply the mod function on this to actually calculate if they are even or odd. So I can say something like mod which is a function. And in this case, basically I'm going to do mod by two. And if the mod by two is equal to zero, that means it's uneven. And if odd, if the actual mod by two is actually not equal to zero, that means that's an odd value. So for this, what I'm going to do then next is, if that's true, then what I want to do is actually print the value, which is m dot measurement value and else because I need to put that condition else just say zero in the cases of odd statements so what I'm going to do is if it's an even value I'm going to print the value if it's an odd value I'm not going to print anything because this column is just for the even values so I'm going to say else zero and as even measurements so this is my one column Similarly, I'm actually going to create another column, which would be an exact state case statement, but just there would be one change in this, which is it's not equal to, it's not equal to, and that the actual column name would for that would be odd measurements. So even just that part of the code, if I run this, I should be able to see something similar like this, which is again, you have measurement ID, value, the time, and then you have even measurement column, and then you have odd measurement column. So that's our first part of the query is done. So second part of the query, if I go back to the question itself, is to actually do a um, sum of all the values. So it wants to see a sum of all the values by date. So that's measurement by date. So I'm actually going to go back here. And as we know, if I have to do some, first of all, I'm going to put this into one subquery. 
I'm going to just say m, m as an alias to this. I'm just going to say select star from, and that would be from this subquery. So even if I run this at the moment, as we've seen before, there's no change yet. So what I'm going to do next is I want to actually sum. So first of all, I need to see my date. So I will say something like mm dot Actually, measurement time. So I have my measurement time here. Similarly, what I want to next is do is uh, sum, and I want to sum it by the actual even measurements and odd measurements. So I'm actually going to say something like mm dot even measurements. And sum by odd measurements. Okay, so once I do that, I have my time and I have my aggregate functions. And as we have seen before, whenever we apply that, we do have to apply the group function onto this. So I'm going to go back on the bottom of my code, just to kind of like zoom it in. So I'm going to say something like group by, and that would be my mm dot measurement time. So once I apply measurement time as my group by and then count these two, I should be able to basically sum them by the group by, which is again the date. So if I actually run this code, oops, that should be mm. So as you can see, we have our measurement time and within that time, we do have the actual measurement values. I can obviously say these are um, even measurements. I can actually just name them like that. And for this, I can just say something like as this. And as you can see, this will give me all by date, which is again my measurement time and what is the actual uh, total sum of even measurements and what is the total sum of odd measurements. And so in case if there's two values, that would be just summed together. So I hope you enjoyed this kind of video. Again, we went through like different questions from fan companies. Again, I'll be making more videos where we'll try to solve more questions in Python, in R, and also looking at some data science maths questions and also solve those problems. So I hope you enjoyed this kind of content. If you do like this kind of videos, do give it a thumbs up so I know that you enjoyed this kind of content. I'll try to bring more content which is related to this. And again, if you do have any suggestions, do leave it in the comment box below what type of video you would like to watch. And I'll definitely create some more content like that. So do subscribe to my channel for my future upcoming videos so you get a notification when I put those videos out and I hope you enjoyed this content and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.